In the name of the Lord, who is our shepherd, and in whose name you, my brothers and sisters, lack nothing, my friends in Christ. You remember the worst boss you've ever had, don't you? You remember their name. You might even remember what their voice sounds like. You remember the worst days that you've had working under them. You remember, unfortunately, how they made you feel, how they were maybe demeaning, condescending, inappropriate, how they were temperamental. I remember my worst boss that I ever had in my worst job, little teenage Mike running around trying to earn a wage, part-time job at a fast food place. I remember walking on eggshells because I never knew what was going to set them off, what I was going to get yelled at for that day. I remember feeling like I was just an employee, not even a human being, with needs and emotions and goals and aspirations. I remember being treated like less than human. And how does that feel? That feels terrible, right? To know that someone looks at you not quite as a human being, but more like a robot, where you have a job to do, and if you don't do it, they'll get upset, like you get mad at your computer when it's not working right. And yet, how ironic, how silly it is that just five to ten short years later, teenage Mike has grown up now, and I do the same thing to other people, don't we? The barista that messes up my coffee order, how quickly I think and maybe even say things that dehumanize them as if they were a robot with one job to do. And if they frustrate me, well, they are less than human. How quickly, how easily we respond to the people in our lives we are supposed to love, supposed to serve, supposed to be there for. But when you get that text from your friend and they're in trouble and they need something, how quickly we think, ugh, now? When I had other plans with my day, as if the people in your life are mere obstacles to how you want to live. This was the problem that was going on in Jeremiah's time, in Jeremiah's day. The kings of Israel were not being good leaders. They somehow forgot that the people of Israel were people. They forgot that thousands and thousands of people were watching them, these kings, and using them as role models, looking at the way that they conducted themselves, the way they worshiped the Lord, the way they showed up to temple, and that they were going to follow suit. These kings forgot to treat their subjects like people, to honor them, to see to their needs, and instead they were being selfish. They prayed to whoever they wanted to pray to. They did whatever they wanted to do. They forgot about the Lord, and they forgot that their job was to love the people whom God loved. And the spiritual leaders in Jeremiah's day were no different. The very people who were supposed to point the Israelites to the Lord were supposed to draw the Israelites into a closer relationship with the Lord. They were just telling them what they wanted to hear, not telling them the truth, but pandering to them, which is a form of disrespect, isn't it? When you don't love someone enough, when you don't cherish them enough, when you don't give them the dignity of telling them the truth, but you just tell them what their itching ears want to hear? No, the leaders in Israel who were supposed to be these great shining examples, well, they were treating the Israelites as less than people. So whether you're alive in Jeremiah's time, whether you're a king of Israel or a, a priest, or whether you're in your shoes and the 21st century, how easily we come to dehumanize the people in our lives. And what does God have to say? Woe. Woe to these people who I have called to be shepherds to my flock Israel. You're not doing your job, kings and priests. Woe to you. Woe to anyone who doesn't give someone else the time of day, who doesn't give them face time because there's no way, better way to treat someone like a human being than to give them your time and attention. But the kings and priests were not doing that. Woe to anyone who can't carve out just a little bit of time in your schedule to care about someone else. Woe to you, God says. 
Because one thing that will always be true, whether you're in Jeremiah's time or in our time, is that as little as we may care about someone we interact with, God cares about them. God cares about that barista that messed up your coffee order, even if you don't. God cares about your friend who's in dire straits and who's reaching out to you via text to, to ask for some help. God cares about them, even if you don't. God cares about people, shamefully, more than we do. Because the world, like a bad boss, is quick to dehumanize you. And how does it feel when you're walking into a job with a bad boss? You don't feel safe. You don't know what side of the bed that boss woke up on that morning. You don't know what little mistake you're going to get chewed out for. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what kind of mess you're walking into. And that's not safe emotionally. That's not secure. The world is not a safe place either. The world treats us like a sheep, pushed out of the flock. Go fend for yourself against the wolves, against the storm against the drought. Go make it on your own steam. You don't belong with us. God says, absolutely not. God calls you his little lamb. God loves you. And he calls himself your shepherd. Human leaders People in your life may fail you constantly by not caring for you. But here's the thing. No one cares about you more than God does. No one loves you and will be there for you better or more than God loves you and is there for you. God is not your coach. He does not give you a couple things to work on so that you can stand on your own two feet. God is not your self-help guru who is here to give you positive vibes, good advice. God is your shepherd. He is not waiting for you to stand on your own two feet before he loves you. He is not waiting for you to get your act together before he calls himself your shepherd. No, God does nothing less than reach out to you and take hold of you, his little lamb, and draw you into himself because he cares about you so much. He wants you to be safe. He wants you to be secure. He doesn't want you to be afraid. So he is your safety. God himself, your shepherd, is your security. God is your shepherd. And he knows. He knows how badly we need community. He knows how badly we need a tribe, a group to belong to. And so he's given us each other. He has appointed, he is the number one shepherd, and like an understudy, God has appointed under shepherds, he says, to tend to his flock. God has given us the gift of one another, the gift of this flock that we affectionately call Trinity Lutheran Church, so that we can gather together, broken as we are, lost sheep as we were, and revel in the safety and security of being in God's love, God's flock. It's a good thing that God loves the broken. It's a good thing that God forgives sinners. It's a good thing that God seeks lost sheep, because that's the story of all of us. And you don't have to search out and try to find God. He's found you and brought you into his fold. Did you notice how God referred to himself in our lesson from Jeremiah? He's mad at his shepherds for not caring for his people as much as he does. And he says, this is the God who's talking to you. The Lord, the God of not armies, not wisdom, not the Lord, the God who created the heavens and the earth. He could say all of that, absolutely. But here, he wants to be known as the God of Israel. The God of people. The God who cares about people like you and me. He chooses to be called 
your God. He is yours. Take hold of him. He's your God. He's your shepherd. You are his flock. Do you remember King David? If you spent any time in the Old Testament, you probably know a thing or two about King David. He was a sinner, absolutely. He was not a perfect guy. But God anointed and appointed him to be the king of Israel. From when David was just a young boy running around being a shepherd of a couple little sheep, God appointed him to be a shepherd king of Israel. But more than that, to be an illustration, to be a metaphor, to be a picture of a greater shepherd king who was on his way. Someone who was going to share the bloodline of David. Someone who could call David his great-great-great-grandpa. Someone who was going to carry on this legacy of shepherd kingship. Also called the righteous branch. A branch off of David's tree. A chip off the old block, as it were. And yet so, so much more. Because this shepherd king is a king unlike anything you've ever seen. Jesus Christ who was God in the flesh, came to be our shepherd king, came to conquer the territory of your heart, to make you a citizen in his kingdom, to draw you into the flock of God, to conquer your grave by rising from his own, so that not even death will separate you from God's love. That's the legacy of your Jesus, your righteous branch, your shepherd king. His kingdom is not just a group of people called the Israelites or the Judeans, but everyone who, like yourself, calls on the name of the Lord. Do you see how eager God is to own you and to have you own him? As he calls himself your shepherd, as Jesus calls himself our righteous Savior. He's ours. Take hold of him and never let him go because with Jesus, you have a security that you won't find anywhere, anywhere else. With Jesus and in his name, you have a community that you won't find anywhere else. With Jesus and in his name, you have safety that you can't get anywhere else. And so you see who you really are. The world, bad bosses, will treat you like less than human, but God could not disagree more. You are his precious, loved little lamb. And he has the final word. You see who you really are, and you see who the people in your life really are. That barista who messed up your coffee order is not just an annoyance or an inconvenience, but a dearly loved little lamb of God, whom God wants to know safety and security if they don't already. Your friend who's in dire straits, your family, your annoying friends, everyone in your life are little lambs whom God dearly, dearly cares about. You see, God cares about you more than anyone else in the whole world. But God also loves everyone in your life. See them the way God sees them. And find a way to share with them the safety that you have in Christ. So that God, through you, can bring them into the safety and security of his fold. A fold like this one. A group of little lambs, saved and found and chosen by God, his remnant. Amen. Would you please stand?